In 2011, Catherine Sagerson signed up for a small studio at the Tannery Art Center, worked with a group of dedicated individuals to form Catamaran Literary Reader, and the first issue of Catamaran arrived from the printers 10 years ago on October 19, 2012. I want to congratulate Catamaran on its 10th anniversary. Even in the internet age, small magazines are the lifeblood of literature. They discover and promote new writers. They give an audience to established writers who are working in non-commercial styles. The vision for Catamaran was to provide a quality literary magazine to reserve the work of contemporary poets, writers, and artists in an enduring format, one that had an aesthetic that made readers want to save and display their copies. Over the years, the works of 1,500 contributors have appeared in the pages of Catamaran. The magazine has featured both debut and well-known writers and poets appealing to a diverse readership. My name is Aniette Guerrero. I'm a huge fan of Catamaran. It's a unique magazine. The fiction, poetry, and essays are exquisite. The artwork is phenomenal. And when you hold the magazine in your hands, it actually has gravitas. You can feel it. You can read a story many times and find something new in it. It has helped me with my own fiction to hear new voices, new perspectives, new ways of being in the world. Writers need that. Catamaran, the voices are very diverse, like my Brazilian voice, right? And I see much beauty and strength in diversity, and that's very important to me. Since that first year, Catamaran has partnered with UCSC to foster careers for young writers through an internship program. The magazine, with its engaging covers and content, became a center for other programs, such as a writing conference on the Central Coast, each summer for the past nine years. The conference tapped into the literary history of our region by inviting writers on tours to literary landmarks. My first conference was a life-changing event because it changed my novel in such a critical way that I went home right away and started rewriting the whole novel and I finished it and I found a publisher. So that's how much that conference and others had been so important to me. Catamaran soon partnered with the Blitzer Gallery to host the Catamaran Art Exhibition, featuring original artworks from the magazine on display in the gallery, hosting its ninth annual art show this year. I am Marie Bender, and I was honored to be on the cover of the spring issue of Catamaran. I was thrilled about it. I love the fact that when I open it up, I never know what I'm going to see. It was something that touched on a lot of very heartfelt, important issues that we're facing today, like climate change. I am looking at figurative work, abstract work. I'm looking at people's work changing. I'm seeing people I've never heard of before, which is always exciting. I think that's one of the best things for any artist is to open something up and see something that touches them, someone brand new that they can explore. And yet, on the other hand, I love seeing a name that I recognize. Next, Catamaran started the first Friday Lit Chat series with contributors who had a new book published as well as the ongoing educational workshop series at the Tannery Arts Center. These have been going on for eight years now. 
My name is Jay Nichols, and I'm a marine biologist. I had the honor to contribute a piece of writing to the first issue of Catamaran way back 10 years ago. I have so much admiration for Catamaran and everything it stands for. Scientists are also poets, and poets are scientists, and Catamaran embraces all of that. One can consume every issue of Catamaran as a whole human being. There are no barriers in the way Catamaran approaches life. The piece that I contributed, thanks to the wonderful editors and feedback, eventually developed into a full nonfiction book. In fact, it became a movement called Blue Mind. I owe a lot to Catamaran and the editors and the readers for that opportunity. So uh, I'm just here celebrating along with you virtually. It's a gem of a literary journal and something for our entire community to be proud of. And then five years ago, Catamaran became a book publisher with the Catamaran Poetry Prize for West Coast Poets, open to all poets living on the West Coast to further support poetry and the unique voice of West Coast poets. Hello, my name is Dory Ann Locks, and I'm here to talk about my long relationship with Catamaran. Artists, I'm sure, as well as poets, are very proud to be published there. And I love how the art informs the poetry, and the poetry complements and enlarges the art. As a judge, I get to see wonderful manuscripts from all over the country and have the difficult choice of choosing just one for the Catamaran Prize. The books that they put out are just lovely, and any young writer would be happy to have their first book or second book published by Catamaran Press. Throughout the years, Catamaran has preserved a sense of its origins along the Central Coast, publishing seacoast-related content with an environmental consciousness, celebrating our beaches, parks, agricultural areas, and natural resources through creative works. My name is Octavio Solis. I'm a playwright, and I have been published in Catamaran's issues in the past. And my initial response to seeing this magazine is that it seemed to focus on the land, to the beautiful seashore, Santa Cruz, Monterey, Big Sur. And so it had this strong regional cast that felt very true to the spirit of the land there. And it feels quite poignant to remember our connection to the land and to nature. I have noticed that the work in Catamaran has expanded, offering works from urban centers like Los Angeles, San Francisco, in Oregon and, and Washington. It really feels like it's uh, garnering national attention and the writers of national repute who are getting published in this lovely literary reader. And the artwork also reflects that. But it's so gratifying to receive the issues. I love reading writers I recognize, as well as being introduced to new writing. That's what's also wonderful about the work that Catherine Sigerson and Elizabeth McKenzie are doing. They just don't settle for what's already out there. They're constantly mining new writers and finding new artwork as well. It has been exciting to see Catamaran on the shelves in bookstores, libraries, museums, galleries, boutiques, and in people's homes over the years. In the years to come, we hope to find Catamaran spotted in even more places, in more readers' hands and on their nightstands, and to honor the works of future contributors to the magazine in their journey as writers, poets, and artists. My name is Vicki Darrow. I'm a longtime subscriber and I own every issue. And I'm so grateful to Catamaran for bringing so much light and beauty into my life all these years. As Jane Hirschfield has said, we should not only look at suffering, but we should abide in beauty, love, acts of caring and connection. This is exactly what Catamaran Literary Reader brings to me. I'm grateful that Catamaran chooses local poets, writers, and visual artists, but also contributors from far and wide, men and women, 
people of many races, genders, and walks of life. The journal is such a weaving together of beauty and suffering. It is a true work of art in and of itself. And as I read it, I experience truth telling coming from the hearts of the contributors and all who are involved in the creation of Catamaran, which I so appreciate in these challenging times. So please uh, do whatever you can to support Catamaran Magazine. It's doing important work for the community of both poets and artists.